Thank you all for coming. It's a lot of great sessions right now. And so I take it that you are going to get something out of this one. And I hope to answer any question that you may have over the course of the presentation. Um, my name is Chad. I'm a front-end developer, sort of a user experience geek, um, working at ArcsWiki here in Austin, doing some noble work, reducing healthcare costs and creating the largest medication encyclopedia, peer, perpetual peer-reviewed. It's pretty cool. I check it out. Um, we use Modernizer for a couple tests, but uh, personally I've used it on every project. Uh, ever since I found out about it a few years, years ago, I always find something, even if it's just one thing that I need Modernizer for, like it's there. And so that has been... Can you speak up a little louder? Yeah, sure. Oh, let me just move closer. So, um, yeah, when I saw that it got into Drupal 8, I was really happy because I was a big fan of Modernizer and I wanted to see what the reasoning was and what it was being used for <clears throat> and also the fact that it was just greatly legitimized by that move. So, um, to start off, okay, it's a little different, but I've been thinking a lot about Modernizer lately preparing for this, and I started dreaming about it, and um, I, I had this really vivid dream, and I converted it into a little short story, and it's sort of covers the philosophy behind Modernizer, and it's science fiction, and that's kind of cool, so if you don't mind, it's short. <laughs> The name of the story is 100 Roving Robots. So, in this imaginary world, there's a band of 100 roving robots, and they show up at people's houses, willing and able to help with whatever you want them to do. Um, there's a whole variety of them, there's new ones, there's, there's old ones. So, they'll do whatever you want them to do, but they... You have to speak their language, right? Only if they're capable of doing it, kind of like a web browser. So if you command a robot to do something and it can't do it, it errors out and it leaves. Like a web browser. So these robots require you to give them commands as soon as they show up. So you kind of have to have your command list ready for them as soon as they show up. So there's new and old robots. You want to take advantage of the, all the features of the new ones. So you spend your days studying up on all different types of robots, manufacturers, models, operating system, programs, versions. So you have this master list that's always growing of every functioning robot. And you have this intricate plan of what you want them to do. So it takes you a long time to create, maintain, and update. Finally, today's your day. The robots show up. A hundred of them. And you have plans for them. Plans for them to tear down your house and rebuild a mansion in one day because that's something that robots can do. So you send them their command list, your command list. 75 robots, they just error out and take off. 24 robots tear down your house and carry off the rubble. Oops. So you didn't predict that the robots would be models you didn't know existed, and that many of these robots were actually different than what they reported themselves to be. One robot is building something. By the end of the day, you have a little tiny room. So your neighbor passes by, he turns to you, he says, Forget the model number, manufacturer, OS, the programs. It's just a losing battle. There's too many different types of robot. There's new ones made all the time, and some of them don't even tell you what they really are. So you say, how do you, I get them to do what I want? He says, well, you prefix your commands with capability tests. Test for flying. If the robot can fly, use that robot to work on your roof. If it can't fly, test if it can move sideways. If it can move sideways, have it work on the walls. If it can't fly or move sideways, test if it can landscape, and so on. Brilliant, you say. And then he gives you a list of capability tests that work, compiled by many of those who use this method. Thanks, I'll use it. So you wait in your tiny room for the robots to return, fully ready to command every robot effectively. And age passes. Finally, the robots return. 
You use the capability testing to command the robots to do your bidding. They build your mansion. And it was beautiful. The end. <laughs> There's an epilogue, but I'll save that for another time. So, let's move on. So it's not about who you are, it's what you're capable of. Names don't matter. And I was looking at this phrase and I was like, okay, wouldn't that solve like a lot of problems in the world <laughs> if this thing was understood as a philosophy, I guess. So it's deeper to me than just browser detection. But in this case, uh, we apply it to the web world using modernizer. So Modernizer is the feature detection library that detects what a browser can and cannot do. And it won't do anything on its own, but you can take those results and act on them. So um, Drupal core, uh, the Modernizer build in Drupal core has like four tests and some uh, functionality. Um, but you can use like over 100 tests, although I don't think that any site will ever need that, but you never know. So. Um, there's lots of fun stuff in HTML5 and CSS3. Um, and browser support's weird, and you shouldn't have to be able to, or shouldn't have to be an expert at what browser does what. You just build the features that you want on browsers that support it, and then come up with a fallback using Modernizer when they don't support it. And then it just works. If the older browsers or you know a browser gets updated and it has the, the capability, then it will just not use that fallback and it'll join the, the rest of the browsers with um, the latest features. So um, using this philosophy, you can sort of modernize uh, yourself and your sites without holding back because of like all the varying uh, browser support. And uh, to me, kind of like has been. Uh, a big deal like deeper than just like oh this is cool because um, I don't like being like held back in any way and the modernizer has allowed me to like when I would perhaps previously get to that wall and just be like what do I do like modernizer is that tool that really takes me through it and so it's been uh, sorely missing for most of my life but it's here now and um, obviously it's important enough to get into Drupal 8 <laughs> Um, even if it's just a minimalist build. So um, Drupal 8 supports HTML5, so um, you know, it made sense to go with Modernizer because that is what it is really good at. So in the past, not something that I really ever did, but I know that it was common practice, was to look at this user agent. And that is rough business. It is a friend for life, prone to error, maintenance nightmare, and just sort of ugly and annoying to deal with. Definitely not beautiful. So don't like this, doesn't tell you much. You're gonna waste your time trying to extract that information from this. So enter modernizer. Test for SVG, if you support it, true. So simple. All right, so Modernizer didn't come from you know, some void. It, well, a void for a need, but it was created by people. And the developers are amazing, and they've made it free and open source. And they have an awesome website. We can download these uh, custom builds that are minified, and it's awesome. So these names are directly off the Modernizer uh, website. And um, of course, there's a lot more contributors in this, and you can find that on GitHub and mad props to these people for moving the web forward. So, it's a lot of talk. Let's talk about how it actually works. So, it's a tiny script that loads at the, I guess the top of the page, like before your other scripts, and um, it creates a JavaScript object with your test results, whether it's true or false. And uh, all these tests, you can find them on uh, GitHub. You can see how they work and everything. And they're all super small and um, basically cover every browser. And so once that object is created that has true or false per test, 
um, it adds those classes to the HTML element so you can use CSS. So let me, let's start at the beginning. So the source of your page put Node.js because if you load your page without JavaScript, that will be there. And um, it's similar to conditional uh, classes, which is popular for, uh, with uh, older versions of Internet Explorer, you can put uh, conditional HTML tags and then you get different classes up in the HTML based on you know, which browser it is. But this is, sort of takes that concept to, uh, to another level. So when Modernizer runs, it replaces that Node.js with JS because obviously Modernizer has run. So now you know that you have JavaScript and that's sort of like just the beginning. Um, what I like to do is um, periodically work on a project, turn off JavaScript and then kind of see what's broken. And then in some cases using this Node.js class can help you fix stuff for, you know, I guess the rare case when people don't have JavaScript um, working. So that's sort of the, the core concept, but you know, it goes a lot further. So this is what your HTML element looks like in Drupal 8. You can install core, uh, Drupal 8 off of uh, Drupal.org and you will see this once your page loads. And so it shows here that there was a touch test run, an SVG test and a HTML5 details element test and I was on Chrome for Mac, so it says no touch instead of touch. If it was a touch enabled device, it would say touch. So with that, you can change styles, and also because that exists, that JavaScript object exists with which you can uh, run different scripts, and you can do conditional script loading, and we'll talk about that later. So the modernizer object in JavaScript is just called modernizer. Uh, on this page, you could go to your console and type in modernizer.touch and it'll give you false. And so from that object comes those uh, CSS classes. So just with these, um, basically yes or no, true or false, you can do like a whole lot. And you can combine them and it's uh, mighty useful. And the reason that these ones in particular were chosen is because they were needed for Drupal core. They needed uh, feature testing and modernizer already had it all figured out. They didn't have to roll their own special thing. It was, uh, it was out there. So I can show you some uh, examples of how you can use these. They're not complicated in any way. They'll just sort of give you an idea of uh, the patterns that you can use. So in this case, um, the header by default has a fixed position, but if you have touch, then it goes back to being static. Like, that simple. Um, a lot of sites don't have the proper sort of responsive framework, and then on a tablet or phone, like, any kind of fixed element gets all super wonky when you zoom in or out or anything like that, and like, this would solve it right there. Like, one test, do you have touch or not? If you don't have it, okay, you get the uh, standard, uh, CSS positioning, which is static. And uh, Drupal core uses that touch test, um, I believe for, for uh, dragging like fields up and down and weights and stuff like that. So you know, the Drupal admin experience is touch capable and it uses um, this test to make it work properly on touch and without touch. Another popular use of Modernizer is for SVG. Uh, most browsers support it, but some don't, and you don't want it to break. And so um, in the Drupal 8 toolbar, it has really nice icons now, and they're all SVGs. And it has a fallback, and it uses this pattern, basically. Um, they don't have to use the .svg before it. Um, you can, but then I guess you run into an issue that if Modernizer doesn't run, then you wouldn't get anything. So you should probably just leave off the first SVG and just leave the no SVG. Basically, whatever your default is, you don't, you don't need that Modernizer prefix, um, you, but you want to use that on your fallbacks. 
So, and th this is a good example of how Modern Rails is just kind of like a go-to go -to guy because the original build for Drupal 8 didn't have this SVG test. And then um, there was an issue about how do we get high, uh, high DPI icons in the toolbar. And then it was decided Modernize would be the way to do it. So they just updated the build with the SVG test and up and running. So you can also use that JavaScript object to run a script based on it. So this is, you're not going to want to use this script on your site, but it's just an example of how you can use it. Um, so if you have your SVG embedded, um, it's going to break on certain browsers. So then in that case, you just swap in the um, swap in a PNG or whatever else. So there are better ones where it'll you know, look through your uh, images uh, and see what has SVG at the end and replace it with the PNG or whatever else. So there's a lot of different ways to do this one. So yeah, don't use this. And then this details element is a really cool HTML5 um, element. Like we know all of our Drupal has always been those field sets that you can open and close. And as part of HTML5, um, you can do it straight in HTML. Like no jQuery JavaScript required. But well, weirdly enough, like Firefox, I think, doesn't have support and uh, IE, but Opera and WebKit do. So in this case, um, you know, what you see here would just work. Um, but then, for those other browsers, then you know you'd say if modernizer details is false, then you have your fallback. And so then, once those browsers do support this, they won't need that fallback. But um, it's a way to, you know, support HTML5 and then not break it on older browsers or browsers that just haven't that they're not up with it. So the question is, how does it get into Drupal 8? Well. Um, there are issue threads on Drupal that, uh, that you can read through, and they're great examples of how the community comes together and makes this kind of thing happen. Uh, they make wise decisions about the, the future and where things are headed. Um, and so when I found that thread, the conversation was already over, but I had gone through it a few times, and um, obviously it was an effort to get it in, the, in there, but then once it was realized that it was not a feature, but rather like essential for supporting older browsers and HTML5 features, it was decided that it would end up in Drupal 8. So there's only four tests and I guess four different uh, I don't know the word for it, but sort of like supporting uh, functions. And um, we've kind of gone over the touch, SVG, uh, the details element, and the input types is HTML has all these new input types like color and number and date and stuff. And same deal, you have to have a fallback for that. So they needed that in Drupal core. So there was the test ready for them with Modernizer. And um, of course, there's like over a hundred other ones. So um, then the, the utility functions, some of them are requirements for those tests. Like I believe test styles and prefixes are required for the touch events. Um, and then the add CSS classes is required for uh, Modernizer to inject those classes into the HTML tag. Um, and so the only thing that was really not totally required that got into Drupal core was <coughs> that add test uh, plugin API. What that lets you do is run your own tests that are just like um, that are just like the tests that you can that you can um, get from modernizer.com, um, but you can test for whatever you want. And what's cool about modernizer is that it's not like jQuery where I guess you could. Uh, break certain things by installing uh, new versions. And so the idea is that with Drupal core, um, we'll be able to move, uh, keep upgrading Modernizer along with it because the part of it that you interface with, um, whether you know the, the object, true or false, or that uh, CSS class uh, with no before it or not, uh, is the same. So you can do all sorts of backend stuff to make it better, figure out uh, compatibility uh, 
tables like from caniuse.com. So hopefully we'll see modernizer 3.0 in Drupal 8. So when I've told a lot of people about modernizer, they're like, oh, feature detection, like that must be like super heavy. Like, are you sure? Like that's a good idea. But like it's super tiny and basically negligible. Um, it's like when it's gzipped, it's tiny. And it gets cached. And just it runs in what I've read microseconds, which I guess is a millionth of a second. So you usually don't have to worry about modernizer causing any performance issues. It's fast. Um, I was on uh, the Wells Fargo uh, website and I was looking at their source and they had the, the fully uncompressed version of um, modernizer with uh, like, you know, 50 different tests or something like that. And like, uh, I couldn't tell the difference, but obviously it was slowing something down. Uh, they have since changed that, but I think it was funny. A lot of sites, you, you, can, you can just open up your, your uh, inspector Look at the HTML tag, and then if you see, there's like telltale signs that it's modernizer. You'll see touch a lot, SVG. Um, and then there's a bunch of ones that aren't part of like the core tests, but are used to decent uh, effect. So this is how you add a test. This is if you didn't want to replace the modernizer library, you could add a test to it. Um, so I guess, you know, if you have Drupal 8 and you um, don't want to add an extra weight of the module or I don't know, but you can use this and you can do a test. For example, this is for uh, jQuery cores. It's a cross-origin resource sharing. You can do uh, Ajax calls onto different servers. And the way it works is, let me see if I can do this right here. All right. So... This right here is the name of the test. So that's what comes back, um, as seen in the bottom there, modernizer.core is true, and then it puts in an HTML tag. And then uh, basically this would have to be true, and this would have to be true. And if they're both true, then the test comes back as true, and you can work with it from there. And so I just got, got this from um, the GitHub repository. There's tons of different uh, tests there. And usually you want to add something like this to your modernizer build, but you, know, you have the ability uh, anywhere in your document to add a test like this or uh, in your module or theme or whatever. All right. So you're definitely going to want to augment the functionality of modernizer. Uh, in Drupal 8 and in Drupal 7 too, it's like Drupal 8 is, is like such a minimalist build. You can really just like do a little bit with it, but if you are going to um, use it to its full potential, you need to download the uncompressed library and then work with it. And then once you know what you need to use, then you can customize it and minify it, just like we did for uh, Drupal 8. So, let's see. All right, number one, modernizer.com is like an awesome website. There's documentation, there is um, this downloader tool, there's resources, there's news. Uh, so right here, you can see, th this is, uh, I had clicked the link for the development uncompressed version. So basically everything is checked off. Um, I see that the media queries one is not checked by default. That's a good one to use. Um, and so this is sort of usually where you begin. And right now, if you're working with Drupal 7, that's what, this, is what, this is where you start. And in Drupal 8, once there's a module ready, you're, you're going to want to do that too. Um, so today, there's amazing integration with Drupal 7 and Modernizer. So but it's good to know because it's going to persist into Drupal 8. Um, so Drupal, in Drupal 7, the, that HTML5 shiv is um, re required, basically, if, if for IE8 and below to understand HTML5 elements. Um, but in Drupal 8, it's uh, included by default. So you're not going to need that in Drupal 8. But Drupal 7, yeah, probably. Um, so when you download this one, 
you'll be able to see, I don't know how visible it is, um, in that gray box there is the file. And at the top of it is always going to be a link with your entire build. So uh, actually, if I go back one and look up at the top, you can see up in the URL there is um, a long list of tests. And so in every minified modernizer file, you have um, the entire list of tests that are included in it. All right, so we're still on Drupal 7 here, and you, uh, the modernizer module is a must-have. Um, yes, you can just include the modernizer uh, library manually, but uh, this module will put it in the right place, and it'll give you um, integration with other modules and, and hooks for modules and themes to uh, utilize it. So that's one of the modules I use on, you know, to put in by default whenever I start a new uh, Drupal site. This is always going to come in handy. So um, what's really cool about it is that it just uses all the um, Drupal-y things, like um, being able to declare tests in your theme info file is really awesome. And then um, you know, in PHP, in your modules, you can use a hook to uh, run tests also, and it'll convert that code into a JavaScript that um, does all the modernizer magic. So this will be available for Drupal 8, I'm sure of it, and I'm going to uh, try to work on my <laughs> PHP chops a little bit, see if I can contribute. Um, but it's great. Okay, you have modernizer, you have the module, now you have the tools. Um, yeah, now you can build a site using feature detection. And um, generally, it's for polyfills, fallbacks, and enhanced user experience. Um, I, I've gone a little modernizer overboard at certain times, and I just try to use it for everything. And then I realized that maybe it wasn't the best use for something, and that there's sometimes natural fallbacks, or that it can get too convoluted if I'm using too many different tests. So it's a tool, and sort of once you use it a bit and understand it, you'll come across a problem, and it's like, oh, okay, Modernizer is the solution for this, and it's going to save me a lot of time. So the one thing that is not part of uh, Drupal 8 core and really, like, I don't know, nerfs the whole library is not having Modernizer load. I understand why it didn't get in there, but this is like the essential piece to Modernizer that you just have to use it because it's modernized superpower. So what modernizer load lets you do is conditional resource loading based on the test results. It's asynchronous, so it doesn't block anything. It's super fast, and it's really easy to understand. And your site's going to be faster if you use this sort of thing in the right situations. So this is just an example of a polyfill using modernizer load. You're, uh, it's a situation where, it's this example that's used all the time, but you, with geolocation, you always have to use a polyfill in, in some way. So this test is basically testing to see if geolocation is true. On an HTML5 browser, it would be. And if it's not, then it loads this uh, polyfill. And, for, and to your app, or whatever it is, um, it doesn't have to know about that polyfill, right? It's, it's kind of se separate from it. And so it, your app does what it does, and then on the browser side, if it doesn't support your location, you have this polyfill, and then your, your app just works. So this, that's really popular use of uh, modernizer load. And um, it's not, it, it doesn't just have to be nope. You can also have yep. And yeah, it really is yep and nope. Um, <laughs> In this, and they, they released that separate from Modernizer, which is called yepnope.js, and it's awesome. Um, in this case, this is more of like a uh, user experience enhancement using it. So um, there's a tiny bit of code, basically test to see if Modernizer touch is true, and if so, loads a couple JS files, and then when it's complete, runs a function. So it can uh, 
load at any point, basically. And the people who don't have touch never have to load those or deal with that sort of thing. So this sort of concept of doing a test and then from there loading JS or even CSS. You, you can load a CSS file and add styles to a page or background images or whatever you want. So you can get creative with this on user interface and it's fun. So yeah, I mean getting creative, you can take it pretty far. You can say, you know, if you have a touch, small screen width, I'm gonna give you a big button, whatever you want. But uh, it's tempting to use it all the time. <laughs> and I'm guilty of that. So in this case, um, you know, fallbacks can be a creative exercise. They don't just have to be, um, let's make a fallback. Like, we can, we can, you can have fun with it. So, like, I don't know, if you think like 8-bit or something like that, you can create a good game today on like an 8-bit uh, type of console. So, yes, it's, this is very pink, and I um, have an example here. It's used a lot because there's no good way to test for uh, box shadow, basically. So let's say... Some designer comes up with this design, let's say maybe it's white or gray, where the modal window is the same color as the background and they want a drop shadow or something. So it's not gonna work on a browser without box shadow. Um, so what do you do? Come up with a fallback that has a bit of creativity to it. Um, I, I know it looks better than, than the drop shadow, but for demonstration purposes, um, someone on IE8, you know, um, is going to see that white border. And you know what? Like, drop shadows and rounded corners and stuff can be really tiresome. So um, maybe they never updated from IE8 because they don't like to see drop shadows and rounded corners. And so you're giving them what they want. Nice corners of a box. So way, the way this will work is pretty simple. If it's IE8, so you're going to get that no box shadow class up in the uh, HTML element. And then your default CSS is to have that uh, box shadow. And then if you don't have box shadow, you get the border. Everyone's happy. You don't have to worry about which browser support what. You just know that if there's some browser out there that doesn't have it, they're going to get your fallback. So um, there is a lot of information out there about Modernizer, modernizer.com. Um, Chris Ruppel did a really good uh, presentation at Portland, and I've used that um, slide deck a, a bunch of times uh, for reference. Um, you can also just you know, Google search Modernizer, and you'll find all this stuff. So I hope that I was able to get the core concepts across about Modernizer and how to use it. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. So if you need something more for Drupal 8, like more than just the, the basic tests that are enabled, like you shed box shadow right then, mm -hmm. what's kind of the practice for, I mean, do you disable the Drupal 8 version of the script and then put your own in, or what, what's kind of the approach there? As I understand it, that'll be the way. In Drupal 8, when you uh, install the module, you'll be able to override the core modernizer with whatever build a modernizer you want. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Do you know of like a resource where um, <clears throat> you can see which browsers uh, have which features and ba based on modernizer stuff? Oh yes, caniuse.com. That is the place, totally updated, it shows you um, a few versions ahead what's, what's planned, so you can plan for the future. It'll show you like as far back as you really want. Um, and there's going to be a level of integration between that and Modernizer 3.0 when it comes out, as I understand it. So yeah, can I use go-to place? Can't go wrong with it.
Anyone else? You can just shout. Yes. One of the options for uh, when you download Modernizer is to include the HTML5 sheet. And so my question is, uh, do you recommend doing that or uh, adding the HTML uh, HTML5 sheet separately um, at its own script? Um, in my experience, Modernizer does a really good job of handling that. And so since I put Modernizer on every site, I just include that shiv and it does its thing. Um, I don't know entirely the reason why it was separate in uh, Drupal 8. I'm sure some very good reason. But I just use Modernizer for that shiv all the time. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? All right, well, I guess that wraps it up. Thank you all for coming. One, one quick one for you. Sure. Um, as you said that we'll be replacing the Drupal 8's modernizer like with our own, is there like a list so that we don't like disable something that Drupal 8 should have that we're going to not include in ours sort of thing? I don't have the answer to that, and I've wondered the same thing myself. <laughs> um, you're about to find out how that works. Hi. Uh, I'm the guy that write the, wrote the modernizer module, and there's a Drupal dependency, like there's a Drupal API for it. So when you, um, gee, I'm too short. Uh, when you go to the admin configuration page, what it does is it actually asks all the mod modules and themes in the system uh, like what they want. And so it's just a hook. You do modernizer uh, info, like my module, modernizer info. And it says, oh, I need box shadow. I need like you know geolocation or something like that. Um, if you look at the geolocation field module, it actually has uh, the modernizer hook implemented so you can get a good idea for how it works. Um, so then what happens is, that URL that Chad mentioned that takes you to the modernizer page, it basically uses all those little slugs and uh, auto-generates a URL for you to go there and uh, grab your new build. And the ones that are in core will be accounted for automatically in the contrib module. They'll just be hard-coded in so that the core ones can't be removed unless you go and do it yourself, which is possible. So you could break it on purpose, but it won't break by default. Um, and also we're working on some like drush commands and stuff like that to uh, uh, auto-generate all this stuff for you on the command line and just put it in the right place. So uh, that's, the, that's the quick version. Awesome. Yeah, so you don't go to modernizer.com directly. You go to the modernizer module in your Drupal uh, admin interface and then um, not only will the core items uh, be uh, requested by default, but whatever other modules are requesting certain tests. And it'll take you to Modernizer, you can then add whatever you want. And that sounds like a great solution. I can't wait to use that. <laughs> Any more questions? So everyone knows how to use Modernizer now, right? All right, good, good, good. <laughs>